In DC, for DC. DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov. Welcome to the District Creators Radio Show. I'm your host, Savvy Sharice, and I'm very excited about today's guest and today's show. I'm here with Miss Sarah Glasgow, who is the CEO and founder. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Of Litany Financial Services. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, this is going to be a fun convo because if people of the internet and the interwebs and, and of the world are anything like me, <laughs> numbers and budgets and finance is my least favorite thing to talk about but with the help of your company <laughs> I have learned that is a very important conversation to have yeah am I the, am I the only one with numbers anxiety in this way no it's normal but I think everyone just needs to remember that it's just money Okay, I like it. So tell me about Lindney Financial Services. So you sent me this um, cute little write-up that I want to read. So at Lindney Financial Services, we are a dynamic group that specializes in the organization and administration that every small business needs, focusing on bookkeeping, financial reporting, and business, as well as tax preparation, which is so important because the three letters that I don't want following me around are <laughs> IRS. You provide sound financial organization that allows business owners to be empowered knowing that their books are in order so they can work on the business yes love it yes so how how did you begin your career or your journey should I say um, with Litany Financial Services well um, I come from a family of entrepreneurs whether it's my uncle doing home improvement mm -hmm. or my dad doing financial consulting, um, it's always been in my blood. Growing up, I had a fully operational office in my basement. So I knew that I wanted to be a business person. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it when I was younger, but I knew, you know, which way I wanted to go. And I wanted to do my own thing. So that's kind of how I got started. Okay. And did you have a specific interest in finance because of what your family exposed you to? Or was that something that got sparked outside of what you were exposed to with your family? Well, it's crazy because although it was there, um, I tried to run from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I went to Morgan State, originally, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Went through Girl, all. You, had, you, you, you just had ambitious goals. I did until <laughs> science sat me down. And I was like, humbled you real quick. <laughs> let me switch up. <laughs> but I ended up coming out doing sports administration. Okay. And I interned with the Wizards. Um, that's when I got my reality check. Mm -hmm. They offered me a job paying like $22,000. And I was like, um, I can't live off of this. Yeah. So um, I, I took time and, like, sat back to think about who I saw being successful. And mm -hmm. the first person that came to mind was my brother, mm -hmm. and he's an accountant. Okay. Um, uh, we have a accounting business that's been in operation since 1982. Wow. And I was like, who do I know that's successful? I thought about him, and I was like, I'm going back to school. Mm -hmm. So I went back and got my master's in accounting and financial management because I knew that watching him— you know, if I took that route, I end up okay. So, mm -hmm. that's how. so this is interesting. I just figured this out. We're going to have a two part conversation talking about your journey as an entrepreneur, but also really pulling out tools and things that are needed for other entrepreneurs in terms of like finances, okay. bookkeeping and things of that nature, because I'm sure your experience in business taught you things mm -hmm. about finances, about having your books in order and books in order and things like that right. from your own personal experience as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. So what would you say one of the biggest lessons that entrepreneurship has taught you about your finances has been? Um, when it comes to finances... You know, we all have these ideas of things that we want to do, and they take money. Mm -hmm. um, I would say actually planning and budgeting and managing money and understanding the cycle mm -hmm. 
from beginning to end. And even if you don't really understand the cycle, but just knowing that there is a cycle and yeah. the money has to be in order for it to run. Um, that is a, a huge lesson mm-hmm. in itself. Um, when I decided that I wanted to start a business, you know, I had the name of the company. I knew I wanted to have something to do with finance, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But also I knew I wanted to buy a house. Like I had all these things going on. Mm-hmm. So um, at the end of the day, it all came back to, well, how does the money look before you jump out here and what you're going to do? Mm-hmm. So Now, if... For individuals like myself, not to make this all about me, right? But I'm trying to glean some information (laughs) from this conversation as well. I'll give you what I got. (laughs) No, but seriously, a lot of people didn't grow up with like financial management tools, learning how to balance their books and and their personal, right? But Mm -hmm. then you go and you open a business and you don't really have those fundamental skills. You haven't really been managing your own money accurately. And now you have this business that you're trying to manage the books for as well what advice do you have for individuals who have who are in that situation it's like not only do I not know how to manage my personal money but Mm -hmm. now I have this business that I'm trying to operate and I don't have really a system for managing that either right well for me I kind of cheated a little bit because I had six brothers and sisters in front of me Mm -hmm. to watch and even though you know I didn't grow up with parents who said, this is how you do this or this is how you do that. I kind of watched them Mm -hmm. from the background to figure out what to do and what not to do. And um, I remember years ago, my brother started talking to me about a budget, Mm -hmm. a simple Excel spreadsheet that I've created to turn into a monster now. And I was at first, I didn't really get it, but... A couple of years down the line, I actually understand what he was trying to show me. Mm -hmm. And in being able to manage myself on a spreadsheet, I could help other friends manage themselves on spreadsheets, which will give them the opportunity to sit back and figure out how they want to approach their business. Because everybody has ideas, but if you don't know how the money's moving, you know, how how good are your ideas? Yeah, and I think that's one of the downfalls of, like, creativity. People who are typically creatives, they have, like, the vision, Mm -hmm. you know, they have have like this this masterpiece but then when it comes down to like the funding the right. budget the numbers the logistics it's like oh yeah forgot about that part and it's not really which is where you come in it's not really i mean it's not hard to me it's actually fun to me mm-hmm. which is good um, it's just money i think i have the perfect profession you know, you watch movies or you see situations in offices where there's the little nerd in the office mm-hmm. behind a computer Is doing that you? numbers. Yeah, I'm fine. I don't have to talk. I'm I'm fine with that. You know, let me sit at the desk and do what I need to do. We don't have to talk all day. I mean, it just works for, for me. For you and yeah. your personality mm-hmm. and, and what works for you. Yeah, of course. Well, that's the beauty of doing things that are aligned with our personality and our spirit and just who we are. Yeah. And I think that's what allows people to be successful when they're doing things that they love, and which kind of leads me into one of my questions, because a lot of times people find themselves in situations, and I'm sure as a college grad, you've seen some of your peers in this same situation it's like you thought you were going to do one thing Mm -hmm. and then you get into this other career because that's what's available right but it's really not what you wanted to do in the first place but here you are doing that so do you have advice for individuals who find themselves in that situation because you've been blessed to be able to work in a career that one you were intentional about being a part of and that you really love for those individuals who are on the other side of that and they're working out of their passions and their creative desire, what advice would you give to them? Well, um, I do stand behind stepping out on faith because I wasn't always in this field. Mm. Uh, My first job out of college was in sales and I hated it. (laughs) Um, It paid the bills. You know, I had a nice salary, but I I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Mm. And I remember switching into finance and being pregnant and interviewing pregnant mm-hmm. and just wondering, oh, my gosh, if they're even going to take me seriously, you know? Right. Not many people make moves under those conditions. And um, I just did it, and it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, just got to have faith, for starters. If you don't believe in yourself, we will. 
Yeah. I think people get caught up in they believe in themselves, but they also want to pay the rent. Well, yeah. On the first. Yeah. That, that was... first of the month keeps rolling back around. I, I, I feel it. I mean, I <laughs> thought I was going to be a sports agent, but I couldn't live off of $22,000. So I had to, you know, be real about what was really going on now. Yeah. Could it be something that I can venture into later in life? Probably so, because just because I'm doing finance right now doesn't mean I can't have other ventures mm-hmm. when I'm financially able to make those moves. If they are if they're available, I'm gonna make them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. Seriously, don't <laughs> <laughs> don't give up. So on the business front, because and and this is one of the things I love about you, and I wanted to bring you on to talk about because again, you have the benefit of you have a full time job that is um, in accounting, but you also have your accounting business. So yes. you're like super blessed that you get to <laughs> be on somebody else's payroll to do your gift and your talent, but you also get the opportunity to do it, you know, for yourself as yes. well. What are your thoughts about that? First of all, major blessing. Major blessing. I definitely love my direct deposit every two weeks. Um, Hello. (laughs) I'm very grateful for that Um, and the opportunity to see things from a different perspective. So, yes, Litany does uh, bookkeeping and financial reporting for small businesses, but working at my full-time job, I get to see finances from a different view. So, um, for example, when I'm testing... I, and I have questions about, you know, the private side or the public side. Like, I can see both. So I, I appreciate having that available mm-hmm. because um, I remember when I was younger saying that I don't want to work for the family business just yet. I want to see what it's like to go out, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that experience matters. Yeah. Because once you come back, then you you appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But then you also bring something back to the table that may not have, you know, been there for you to begin with. Mm -hmm. So what would you say one of the biggest um, lessons that you learned from observation was or is in terms of you being exposed to entrepreneurship on a family level at such a young age as well? Um, Well, discipline. Discipline definitely is a big thing being an entrepreneur because you have that freedom to Mm -hmm. do what you want whenever you want. But at the end of the day, you're running a business and you got to get the work done. Right. So you have to be disciplined to know that, yeah, I may not have to work eight hours a day, but I still need to get everything done. There's still people relying on me. Mm -hmm. Um, I still have a product to deliver. But then you also want to build in that work-life balance, which I appreciate. Um, it allows me to plan around deadlines, you know, on my own terms. Some people don't get a chance to do that and yeah. are living miserably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who would you say Litany Financial Services is for? I would say Litany is for the Sharices. It's definitely for me. I'm a, a, <laughs> I'm a client. <laughs> Um, the small business owners who know that they have an idea and they know where they want to begin, but they're just not sure how to get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some clients that I've been working with who are just in love with everything that I do. And it's so funny when they say, you know, oh, you're so thorough, you're this and that. And I just feel like it's just natural to me you know Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) so for those people who who don't have the time to actually sit back um or the organizational skills Skills, yeah yeah, i that's who litany's for Mm -hmm. not that we don't want to take it to the next level but you know you have to start small yeah and now this is something that's for business owners for business bookkeeping but you also do personal finance i do um and you know how Erica Badu is like, I'm sensitive about my, uh-huh. um, <laughs> I do personal, but I kind of like pick and choose who I want to work with because mm-hmm. you have those that want to do it, but they're not really ready. ready. And yeah. I don't like to feel like I'm like, excited about my passion and, you know, we're, we're, I'm ready to get started with you, but mm, you're not ready to get started with me. So I'm yeah. kind of, 
I kind of saved those for the special folks. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> so as an entrepreneur, and so you're balancing your full-time job, you're balancing your business, you're a mom. What do you do for self-care as an entrepreneur? Um. Well, I'm really big on having a work-life balance. Mm-hmm. I try to get away once a quarter, whether it's laying on a beach with friends and family or, you know, going down south to visit family. I make sure I fit that in because if I'm not right, if I don't have my me time, I'm no good to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, When I hear people say they haven't been on vacation in years or even one year, I don't understand how they're making it. (laughs) Like, I need the sun. Yeah, The sun recharges me, so... I'll grind for a couple of months, but then I'm taking a break and I'm going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, for you as a business owner, and again, I'm just thinking because you had the benefit of seeing entrepreneurship from the lens that you did, maybe you had this figured out, but maybe you didn't. So you can let me know. How did you come up with your pricing, especially in the beginning phases when you were a new entrepreneur and you're trying to figure out like, okay, I know I have this skill, I have this service. Now, how much do I charge? Well, most people have this idea of starting a business and making so much money, and then they end up charging more than the product is actually worth. Yeah. Um, Usually more than the marketplace. But pricing, to me, is one of the trickiest aspects of the business. Uh, When starting out, I believe that the compensation should be more tailored around whatever the market will bear, Mm -hmm. you know? Because at this point, you're an unproven entity. Your market is not going to allow you to charge but so much. Yeah. Therefore, your pricing is really a grass rooted guerrilla market platform, like word of mouth, Mm -hmm. you know, social media, you know, putting the word out there in exchange for below market pricing. So essentially, the more business you do, the better you become, the more efficient mm-hmm. you become, and then the more you can charge. The prices go you up know? after that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm down for that. <laughs> I like that. So in terms of social media, um, how does social media impact your business? Do you use social media for your business? What are your thoughts on social media for the entrepreneur? Well, I believe that social media is not a game changer at this point, but it's the game changer. Um, it's not something that I'm strong at. And I feel that if you don't get into it, you're kind of already losing out. Yeah. You know, um, there can't be enough social media. You can compete with firms across the world. You know, you can meet uh, potential clients that you can't necessarily get to. I really believe that it adds a benefit to those that want to do business with local people. Mm -hmm. However, I know that it's also something that I need to work on, even from a personal standpoint. I mean, I have Instagram, but I barely post, Mm -hmm. you know, so I know that it's something I need to work on because it's taken over. I was just talking to an entrepreneur, actually, an entrepreneur friend on the ride over. He was telling me he he just left a class because he's Mm. like horrible. Mm. So, And he has other people running his accounts and things like that. But he's like, I realize at this point, this is something that I need to learn. Like, even if I'm paying someone else to do it for me, I need to know, you know, what's going on with that. I mean, we're in the super digital world so super. everything's moving super fast you gotta kind of get in while the water's troubled <laughs> and the children nowadays they're so good at it I know. and I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> they're so good so outside of social media do you have any other apps that you love um, for your business endeavors that you use well I love Google Calendar. <laughs> I, love Google. I love the whole Google suite to be honest <laughs> I mean I run Everything through there. Um, And QuickBooks, Mm -hmm. the app, those are the two that I spend a lot of time in. I mean, you can do everything on QuickBooks. I mean, I can have someone say, hey, Sarah, can you send out an invoice for such and such? I can do it, Mm -hmm. you know, from the app. So I really. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I love QuickBooks online or the QuickBooks app. So um, question for those individuals who maybe are not as prepared to seek out some some professional financial services, but they want to just kind of get a start, right? Okay. Baseline. What would you say is kind of the starting point for doing a budget for your business? Well, a conversation. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think by actually talking things out, um, you can find where you need to begin. Mm-hmm. Because um, there's one thing to have all these ideas in your head, but once you put it down on paper, right? Um, I think it begins to come together. I write everything down. Mm-hmm. I have notes from years ago, mm-hmm. you know, goals and everything that I put on paper and they just come to life. And the question also... I think that it is important to ask in the dreaming or in the visionary stage. It's like, well, how much is this going to cost? Because <laughs> sometimes it's like your dream yeah. is so big and nothing has a price tag on it. And it's just like, you know, it's just you're in vision mode. But then yeah. you kind of got to drill down to, to get a little bit of reality into the vision. And what are you willing to do um, to make it happen? Because I've had moments in my life where I've worked multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. Um to get things done where I've had maybe one part-time job this season that runs out, but then another part-time job the next season, you know, until it got to the point where I didn't have to do it anymore. How Mm -hmm. far are you willing to go? Yeah. A lot of people don't want to put in the work. Mm -hmm. They just want the dream. What does the saying collaboration over competition mean to you, especially as an entrepreneur? Well, Collaboration over competition says to me, let's come together, let's work together versus against, you know, each other. Mm -hmm. I think it's cute. Um, And it's a joint venture in my head. And I feel like they have their place. Um, For me, because I'm always like, my mind is always going. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to collaborations in my head, this is a project that I'm working on. But Mm -hmm. then I also want to know what's next because, you know, that's that one single project. So we're going to collaborate. And once we get this up and running and it's rolling, then what's next? Mm -hmm. So I think some people, especially um, young entrepreneurs, they come together, they want to collaborate, but then they stop there. It's like, what happens after this? What's the follow through? What happens after the collaboration? So good question. I'm gonna <laughs> add that to my questions list. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Let's make this money grow. Like, how do we keep going? Multiple streams. Multiple streams of income. <laughs> a motto that I live by for sure. So if you were making a beverage and your beverage had three ingredients in it that would produce entrepreneurial success. Oh, gosh. What three ingredients would be in your beverage? Besides tequila. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can still have a shot of tequila in there. Um, gosh. That's a hard one. That is not a hard question. You just drop so many gems for your, that you use for yourself on a daily basis. I'm not going to make the drink for you, but we already got the tequila in there. Okay, um... Discipline. I was saying that was the first thing I knew. Discipline. That was literally the but first see, thing you said. <laughs> I'm saying it, but okay, for me, when I say discipline, I don't think discipline is just part a part of who I am. Right. Like, but I, that has led to your success. <laughs> so give us the drink. So, sis. <laughs> discipline, determination, mm-hmm. and um, faith. Um, you got to know. You got to believe in yourself and have faith that what you want is going to come to pass. Definitely. So a shot of tequila, a shot of tequila <laughs> discipline, definitely. determination, and, and faith. faith. Yeah. Sprinkle it with a little bit of drive. You got to have that drive. Yeah. You got to be, you know, aggressive out here. You can't just sit around and wait for something to fall in your lap. That's true. Um, most times, many of us do. And then you're looking up hating on somebody because they're making moves and you could have made the same ones. You had the same opportunities. What'd you do with your 24 hours? Right. They ain't put no discipline, drive, (laughs) (laughs) determination in Mm -hmm. there. So where do you see your business going as an entrepreneur? Do you, where do you see yourself within the next five, 10 years? Or what would you say your ultimate goal for your business is? Well, my ultimate goal is to be able to step away from my day-to-day job. Mm -hmm. However, I do want to be, quote unquote, financially stacked to make those moves. I want to be able to move daily and not miss a beat Mm -hmm. um, as if the money's still coming in, Mm -hmm. like my, you know, biweekly direct deposit. Um, There's so many 
ventures or ideas I have in my head. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure which is which are going to come first, but I know if the money's not in order, I can't. I can't move. I have a child to provide for mm-hmm. first. You know, I have yeah. to feed her and myself first. You mm-hmm. know, um, I wish I could just. Drop everything, Same. but it's not <laughs> like that anymore. No, you know, I don't think it ever was. <laughs> it's not like that anymore. So, um, I definitely have a bunch of ideas. You know, I had this list that I created years ago um, with goals that I wanted to accomplish every year. Mm-hmm. You know how you have by this age, I want this. And yes. My- and it didn't necessarily go how I thought it would go. Mm-hmm. So um, I try not to be so hard on myself yeah, anymore. Yeah, give yourself some grace. You know, mm-hmm. I know there are things I want to do. I try not to put them in any order. Mm-hmm. It's like just keep doing what you're doing because um, everything seems to be flowing right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe not on my time frame, but it's working. So I'm just kind of letting the universe guide me. Yeah. I love that. What would you say are some like just really fundamental practices that individuals should have for financial wellness? Um, A routine. Um, You know, it's funny because my coworker uh, that used to sit behind me would know when I'm working on my budget, Mm -hmm. you know, because I have all these colors and Uh it's a spreadsheet. But, you know, when I go to work in the morning, one of the first things that I do when I'm unwinding is log into my bank account to see, Mm -hmm. okay, how much money I have left, how much I've spent. Like, once you start to track how you're spending, Mm -hmm. I think it'll help you hone in on where you need to fall back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, That routine for me um, has worked because it lets me know when I can play and when I can't. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure many people have swiped that card way too many times, mm-hmm. knowing you have something to take care of, but this is what you want to do. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you might not be able to go out to lunch that day, mm-hmm. but, you know, I think once you develop that routine, yeah. you'll begin to manage your money a little better. Okay. It's helped me. So, a routine... Obviously, like a budget, knowing what's going in and knowing what's going coming yeah. out. You got to have more coming in than you have going out. And I, I think mean. that's probably a downfall for, for <laughs> many. <laughs> and one of the huge things for me is that I don't carry cash. Mm-hmm. I try not to have any cash on me because it's like when I do, it's like I'm just gone. Yeah, so but fast. But I would think it would be the... For me, it's that way when I have my card. Really? So, like, when I have cash, it's like, whoa, this pile is getting smaller. Whereas when I have my card, it just feels unlimited. It's just like, <laughs> get a black card. I'm just out here. <laughs> no limit, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I think for me, because... I can when I swipe my card, I can see where I'm spending it versus spending cash. I might forget. Yeah, that's true. I, um, I can feel that. That... That helps me with my discipline because I'm mm-hmm. like, I spent how much on how what food this week? Oh, no, I'm tripping out here. Mm-hmm. But when you have that cash, you'll be like, did I start with 100? Or I, I forgot with where I spent, yeah. spent it. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's been working for me. Mm-hmm. And um, from a business standpoint, um, actually have, using a card for transactions helped me to better track. Your because, business expenses. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you have those people that... Swipe that card, throw that receipt away, and, you know, they don't really know how much they spent on what or when they spent it. I just think it's better record keeping and yeah. falls in line with what I do, so it works perfectly for Makes me. Makes sense, because then it's like you're not freaking out when it's time for you to gather yeah. your stuff to file your taxes, which is, like, so scary. Everything's in one place. Mm-hmm. It's not scary. It is. <laughs> it's not scary for you, but... For people, and I know I'm not the only one who, as soon as you like, I need receipts and <laughs> numbers and spreadsheets and budgets. I'm just like, eh, oh, here, gosh. I just want to give everything to you and you give it back to me and make it all make sense. It's so crazy how <laughs> it's so fun to me, but most people don't like it. Mm-mm. It's just it, money. To me, it's like going to the dentist. I get so mm-hmm. excited about it. Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> not my fave. Sarah, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you Please for let our me. listeners know how they can take advantage of your wonderful services that you offer and how we can keep in contact with you. Well, I am going to um, leave you some of my business cards. Okay. Um, 
I she gonna get social media and this shit, y'all. <laughs> this mean, girl trying to leave business cards on a radio show, but I love you I so know. much. <laughs> I t- look, I admit it to it though. That's not my strength. <laughs> it's not my strength, but you know, I'm gonna well, work on it. Well, if nothing else, give us your email address. Okay, I could be reached at Litany Financial Services. Um, L I T A N Y. F I N A N C I A L services with the S at the end at gmail.com. Perfect. Um, send me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Reach out to Cherie. She can put She's you in the contact bomb, with y'all. me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, girl. Thank you for You're having best. me. In DC, for DC, DC Radio, 96.3 HD4, and DCRadio.gov.